Looking to brighten your smile and boost your confidence? Look no further than Brighter Shades Ahead, your ultimate destination for teeth whitening. Jamie, the founder, has over 20 years of dental expertise. As a licensed and certified teeth whitening professional who understands the challenges of motherhood, she's here to help you. As a valued listener, you can take advantage of an exclusive offer. Mention this podcast and receive a generous $25 discount on a blissful 90-minute session. Whether you're preparing for dental work or just looking for a confidence boost, visit brightershadesahead.com or call or text 801-550-4693. Again, 801-550-4693 to schedule your next whitening session. Remember, Brighter teeth won't solve all your problems, but they're a beautiful reminder that brighter days are always ahead. I recently got my teeth whitened by Jamie and loved the experience. I am excited to go back and I know you'll love the experience too. So book her today. Hey, it's just Blaine and Bex here with the best podcast in Utah. That's right. It's Radio Daybreak, a show highlighting the people, businesses, and events that make Daybreak Salt Lake City in Utah one of the most majestic places around. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and never miss an episode of the best podcast in Utah, Radio Daybreak. Ready to have more energy, fit into your favorite jeans again, and just feel good? Shannon Galladay is here to help you create a healthy lifestyle so you can be your best for the people you love most. Shannon, the founder of Galladay Fit, has over 12 years of experience as a health and fitness coach and a year of experience as a life coach. As a mother of three girls who struggled with her weight during pregnancies, she understands what it's like to get her body back after having babies. As a valued listener, you can take advantage of an exclusive offer. Mention this podcast and receive a generous $20 discount on our fitness and nutrition package, plus a free 30 minute life coaching session with Shannon. Whether you want to lose the baby weight, run a 5k race, or just feel better in your clothes, call or text Shannon at 480-823-2595. You can also go to yourwellnesscheckin.com to get Shannon's free checklist and videos to help you start feeling better right away. It's time to start feeling and looking your best so you can take care of the people you love most. Shannon is so welcoming and easy to talk to. I just love interacting with her. I know working with her could be a meaningful experience. The following presentation is a production of Ride the Wave Media. Step into the world of A is for Adversity, a podcast where we explore the journey of motherhood. Join us weekly as we navigate the intricate garden of self-discovery amidst the trials of motherhood. This is your space to nurture your identity and bloom. I'm your host, Jen Banks. Okay, I'm here with Anna Palmer, and Anna's been my counselor, my therapist for the past couple months, and I thought she'd make a fabulous guest. So, I am just going to let her introduce herself a little bit to my audience. All right. Well, thank you, Jen. This is a very wonderful opportunity for me, and I'm honored that you've asked me to do this. So thank you. Okay. So I live in Salem, Utah. We've lived here for just over a year. We used to live in Springville, and we lived there for about 21 years. I was raised in Washington State. I went to Back in the day, it was called Ricks, and I got an associate's degree, believe it or not, in broadcasting. Mm. And then I got a bachelor's degree in English with secondary teaching certification. And then I got a master's degree in clinical mental health counseling. I'm a wife. We've been married for almost 27 years, uh, I think. <laughs> Um, we have three boys. My oldest is 25. My middle boy is 23. They're both married. The oldest has a little boy. He just turned a year. Mm-hmm. And my youngest graduated in the spring and he's 18. Great. Thank you. I love that update. I knew Anna when I lived in Springville about 10 years ago, maybe even more now. And I babysat her boys when they were little. So that was fun. That's right. (laughs) And then I had a follow-up question for you. So when did you get your master's? Was it shortly after you went to college or did you like go back and get it? Yeah, actually, I graduated with my bachelor's degree in 1996 from BYU. And in 2014, I started my master's degree. So I graduated in 2016. So yeah, I took a long break. I thought I wanted to be, when I graduated with my English bachelor's, I thought I wanted to teach English at the college level. 
I love literature. And I thought, I want to teach medieval literature when I grow up. Mm-hmm. And then I decided in, in about 2013, 14, oh, I think I don't want to do that. And I actually want to be a school counselor. And then partway through my school counselor program, I learned that school counselors don't really go into depth when they're working with students about helping them with mental and emotional health things. And so that's when I changed to clinical mental health. Hmm. Got it. Thank you. I was curious about that. So we'll just go into a little bit about who you are. I've realized recently that a lot of people explain who they are in words of what they do, you know, and it's totally separate. So uh, we'll just, yeah, talk about that. And then we will move on to what you do. So I decided it might be fun to ask my guests a different question about themselves for each episode. And so the question that I thought of for you is, what is your favorite scent? I love that question because I am very much moved by scents and Mm. they help me even change my mood and help set the tone for my days. My favorite scents are, and I had to look up how to say this and I still don't know if I'm saying it right, bergamot Mm. and patchouli. Those are my absolute favorites. And I also love lavender. Yeah, I've never heard of those first two scents before. You'll have to explain that. Where do they come from? I just read up on bergamot and it's kind of a citrusy. It's actually a fruit, I think, grown in France. Yeah, something somewhere in Europe, bergamot. Yes, it's a brown to pear-shaped citrus fruit of a Mediterranean tree. Hmm. It has... French roots, I think, yields a yellow to green rind, which yields a bitter, fragrant essential oil that is typically considered to be a hybrid of sour orange and lemon. It's in a lot of scent products that induce like relaxation and stress reduction, um, sleep, things like that. Got it. You answered my follow-up question, which was going to be, how did you discover that you liked it? So that's that's great. Yeah. I'm such a believer that everything happens for a reason, even down to the little things. So it's been fun to plan out my episodes and decide what question I'm going to ask which person. So that's fun that scents are something that's important to you. Yeah. Okay. What are some of the hats you wear? Well, first of all, I know I'm a daughter of God. And when I remember that, then the the other hats I wear are more easily executed. Mm. Yes. And I'm a wife and I'm a mother. I'm a daughter. I'm a sister. I'm an aunt. I'm a grandmother. I find that hard to believe, but I am. (laughs) I also work for Nebo School District. I am the online programs coordinator, and those are the academic online programs that Nebo District runs for its students K through 12. And then I'm also a therapist. Great. Thank you. What is one of your core values? What do you feel like is one thing that drives you? I feel very strongly that everyone has a lovable part within them, no matter what they've done in this life, no matter what sins or crimes they've committed or how wonderful they are, (laughs) everyone has lovable pieces to them. And I feel like it's up to us to find those so that we can interact in Christ-like ways and be loving towards others. That's a very great driving force. I feel like, you know, Love. I feel like you can't go wrong with love. I remember when I was preparing for my mission, I hearing a lot of people say that some will be easier to love and some will be harder to love, but you know, you'll just love them all. Right. So yeah. there's finding that part. Yeah. When have you experienced some adversity in your life and did it refine your character? Absolutely. Every single time. <laughs> Yes. There have been several times. I remember in 2013, the day that I got my acceptance letter for my grad program, actually, my husband lost his job of 13 years. Hmm. And then through the next six years, we went through a series of getting hired, getting let go. And I'm going to pull this all together. There was another experience I had where I got uh, Bell's palsy the day before my third boy was born. And that was difficult too, of course, in a different way than unemployment because I got the looks because my face looks so strange. 
it was completely outside of my control. We'll just stick with those two incidences for now, but they both taught me that who I am at my core in my soul is not reflected in what happens in my life, whether it happens to me or it happens from me or it happens within my body. None of that is related to who I am at my core. And I don't have to define myself by the things that happen even in at my own hand or happen to me or what life hands me. I can be, I can define myself outside of all of that. Yeah, that's great. I know you've been helping me work on that too. I I love what you've taught me about our inherent self and our derived self and just which lens we're using to see who we are. Yeah. Great. Now we will move on from who you are to more of what you do. So what are some reasons you wanted to become a therapist? You mentioned that you enjoy the deep knowing and understanding someone instead of just more surface level. What what draws you to that? Well, I have been in therapy myself. Mm, yeah. And right after my second child was born, I was in therapy and it helped me in ways I could never have imagined or dreamed. And experiencing that for myself, I decided I wanted to have any piece of that I could. It's such a reciprocal reward when you see others learn and experience better ways of living for themselves. And just to have the honor of having a a small, tiny piece of that experience is just incredible. The only thing that comes even more rewarding than that is being a mother and a wife. Being a missionary is is close to it too, but there's nothing else I've experienced that gives you that same reciprocal reward as being a therapist. Hmm. I love the way you put that. There's a quote that I always use that says, shared joy is double joy, shared sorrow is half a sorrow. And I, that's what it reminds me of. Yeah, I feel like as time goes on, we're talking more about therapy and just how good it is and how helpful it is. Do you feel like that too? Or was it talked about years ago as well? And I just didn't notice. I'm wondering if it was just like an age thing where I didn't realize that so many people went, went to therapy or maybe more people are going to therapy. What's what's your opinion on that? Are you referring to like how it's seen in society and our culture? Yeah, that. And also just, I feel like people are more open with saying that they are going to therapy. Definitely. I definitely feel like we're coming to a place that's changing within our society and culture that people are more open about talking about that, which is amazing, I think, because of the stigma it's often seen as. I've always felt like if the stigma could go away, so many more people would be able to live so much more joyful lives. Um, When I was going through therapy over 20 years ago, it was highly stigmatized And I didn't dare tell anyone that I had gone through therapy. I don't know that all of my siblings know that I've gone through therapy. Mm. I owe it to my mom because she she lived in a different state at the time and she encouraged me. Back when I was going through therapy and decided to do it, it was very much, um, well, you just need to think positive more or you need to read your scriptures more often or you need to pray harder there was some kind of behavior that I could have done better that would have helped me as seen through the eyes of an outsider. But I do very much feel like mental health and wellness is very much coming to an area of being much more widely accepted, which is wonderful. So wonderful. Yes, I agree. Are you looking for peaceful, screen-free activities? Introducing Daybreak Dough, a local homemade Play-Doh and sensory kit business that uses natural ingredients found in your kitchen. Ash has been making homemade Play-Doh and sensory activities since 2016. As a preschool teacher, she immediately saw the impact creating engaging sensory experiences had on her young students and started using them as a tool to help with her own mental health too. Homemade Play-Doh and sensory activities offer many benefits for young children. 
adults doing inner child work, and anyone who is seeking more play in their lives. Daybreak Doe's mission is to remind all of us the importance of sensory play, no matter our age. Visit www.daybreakdoe.com and enter code ADVERSITY at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Daybreak Doe can also be found on Instagram and Facebook with the handle at Daybreak Doe. I ordered a few of these from Ash and I love them so much. My preschoolers stay engaged for a very long time and request these kits almost daily. Whether you're ordering one for yourself or some kids in your life, you won't be disappointed. Have you ever been curious about the energies that influenced you the moment you took your first breath? Are you captivated by the cycles of the moon? Are you intrigued by the connection you feel to the stars in the universe? If so, having your birth chart read can answer these questions and give you insight to the cosmic blueprint that was made when you were born. Kaya Community founder Cambria Davis is an experienced astrologer and energy healer that has the unique ability to unveil the magic of your birth chart and the essence of your soul in ways that will resonate with you for years to come. Not only can this 60-minute reading connect you deeper with the stars, the cosmo, and yourself, it can help you return to your soul's essence and to remember the purpose you have here during this existence. It can provide direction and guidance if you feel stuck or lost. And most importantly, it can help you be in alignment with the timing of your life. Follow your soul today and book your reading with Cambria by visiting www.kayacommunity.com. That's community with a K. Or find the link in the show notes. I met Cambria at the business networking lunches in Daybreak and have been so fascinated by her talents and personality. And I'm so excited to have my reading done with her in the future, as well as a girl's night where she will do birth chart readings. Book a session with her and be sure to mention that I sent you. Someone told me recently that they view healing as not fixing yourself, but more just like being aware of yourself. And I liked that because it it doesn't feel good to think that you're broken. It feels like, you know, there's always things that we can be working on or improving, but nothing's irreparable, I guess, too. Right, right. So in your mind as a therapist, what are a few benefits of therapy? I definitely feel like no one is worse off for therapy. Anyone and everyone with the right therapist. <laughs> is going to gain and be able to live a better, more calm, peaceful, content, happy life with therapy. Now, when I say with the right therapist, depending on who you ask, they might say like 50% or 80% of the success of therapy boils down to the therapeutic relationship. When I first meet with people, I am always wanting to make sure they are comfortable with me. And I always tell them, if you're not comfortable with me and you can't imagine yourself opening up to me, then let's find you somebody else. Because not every counselor is for every person. We need to find somebody for any client that's going to be able to resonate with them and click and connect with them. And they're going to be able to be 100% vulnerable with. Otherwise, therapy is not going to work. So first of all, it's important to find a a counselor that you're going to click with. Otherwise, you're just kind of wasting your time and money Mm -hmm. because you're not going to be able to be vulnerable and you're not going to be able to get anywhere. So if you can find somebody like that, then it's going to be worth every penny because you're going to be able to dive in deep and you're going to be able to look at things and see ways of helping yourself. I feel like awareness happens once you start getting into that deep stuff. You start learning things about yourself. You start understanding things about yourself. And once those two things happen, you start having an awareness and understanding of other people, especially those that are important to you. And then that usually is shortly followed by a motivation to change yourself. Once you have that awareness of how you're functioning and you're understanding it better, you're motivated to change yourself. And then that generally leads to more compassion for yourself and for others. And additionally, you're going to be learning tools to change things you want to change about yourself. And then you're going to be given the opportunity to practice those and kind of iron out all the little tweaks that might happen along the way or the difficulties and just learn better ways of functioning, learning about how you're thinking, learning about how you're feeling and why you're thinking and feeling all those different things because of who you are at your core or how your core beliefs 
are showing themselves in how you're thinking and feeling. And then that, you know, of course, influences your behavior. So it's it's all connected. And that all of that, the awareness, understanding, increased compassion, increased motivation to change, and then learning the tools to change and improve and change and improve your core and understand your core better. All of that is why counseling is so beneficial. Yeah, I love all that. That that was spelled out really well. When you talk about having the right therapist for you, it reminded me too, I've had a friend who has gone through a few different therapists and she said that she learned things from each one, but there was a reason that she had to change each time. And I had a therapist prior to you that we talked about and she wasn't LDS and I feel like she kind of used religion in an, in an interesting way. And so I saw a change just so that I could talk to someone who shared my beliefs and kind of knew where I was coming from there. So yeah, there's lots of reasons that it might not resonate, but when you do find the right one, yeah, like you said, all those things can happen. Yeah. So do you have a quote or mantra that guides what you do or that you reflect on a lot? Yeah, there were two that always come to mind when I when I think about just therapy as a whole. One of them is never let a problem to be solved become more important than a person to be loved. And I always believed that Thomas S. Monson said that, but I I Googled it and it's also been attributed to Barbara Johnson. So depending on who you ask, one of those two people said it. (laughs) And that just really expresses how vitally important relationships are. And when your relationships in your life are going well, life seems to go well. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Life is easier to handle. You feel your support system to the degree you need to. You feel that comfort and love and stability. You feel like you can handle anything. Your esteem and your confidence soar and you're just able to navigate life much, much better when your relationships are where they need to be and in a healthy spot. Another quote that I really, really love, and this, again, has different people attribute it to different authors, but for, by and large, in Google, they say that Victor E. Frankel said this, And it's from his book, Man's Search for Meaning. And I read this a long, long time ago when I was getting my bachelor's degree. I haven't read it since, but the the overall concept is really what is so valuable. He was in a concentration camp. He was Jewish and he survived that concentration camp. So this is the quote, between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. Usually what happens is something happens in our life, a situation or circumstance, life happens, and then there's a response. And it feels like it's a split second so fast, right? We have an emotional response or we have thoughts and they just happen in a split second. And when I first learned that there's actually a space in there, and the more we are aware of that space, the more we can capitalize on our ability to choose our response. And when we can look at that space and say, how am I seeing myself in this situation? And know that that perspective is connected to how we see it that situation, our perspective, our thoughts, and then our feelings and our behaviors about the situation. When we are aware and we can capitalize on that space and we can pause and make that space bigger, then we feel more control over our lives. And you imagine a Holocaust survivor and how much control they had in a concentration camp. Very, very little. Basically, the only control you have is what mood you're going to have that day, right? Mm, And that's that's all he controlled. Mm. And and he figured that out. He figured out that there's a space in there that we can choose. We can choose our thoughts and choose our feelings. It's hard because we can't always choose our feelings. But when we understand what influences our feelings, we have a little bit more control over those feelings. I could go on and on and on, but there you go. 
<laughs> yes, that is so good. That's such a good reminder. I had heard that quote and that concept recently, and it's it's just yeah, mind blowing because the more we work on it, like you said, the more that space grows, or we we find that we have the control there instead of just reacting. Right. Also, I've noticed with that a lot of the times when I've been working with you, you'll say to me, "Okay, and what does that mean about you? What are you saying about you in that moment?" And so. That's been interesting to think about because I've never really thought that way. Like, what am I making this mean about me? Or what am I perceiving that this means? And so, yeah, such a good tool. Well, thank you. Is there anything else that you felt like you wanted to share with us? I don't think so. I think just knowing that being in therapy does not mean you're weak. It doesn't mean anything about a person except for your willingness to capitalize upon a situation that can help you improve, help you live a happier, more joyful, content life. Yes, agreed. Well, thank you for your time. And I don't know if you're accepting new clients at this time, but if people wanted to work with you, do you have a website or a way I can direct them? I have an email address. It's quite long, but I'll give it to you. It's Anna, A-N-N-A, Sophia, S-O-P-H-I-A, Palmer, like a palm tree, P A L M E R at gmail.com. So Anna Sophia Palmer at gmail.com. And you can also find me on Facebook, Anna Davis Palmer. Perfect. Thank you. Well, I highly recommend you. And it's, you. it's been fabulous to find someone where I feel like it's a good fit. So thank you for coming on and sharing some of your thoughts and, and your expertise with us. Yeah, no problem. My honor. Hey, this is Sarah Albert with Daybreak Treasures Boutique. I would like to talk about some events coming up. So we are going to be having some paint nights at Novell Daybreak Apartments, 10678 South Lake Run Road in South Jordan on Tuesday nights from 530 to 8, starting on January 9th and going through January 30th, Tuesday nights. 530 to 8. You can sign up by going to daybreaktreasures.com, art workshops, and book your spot.